Welcome back, everyone, and welcome to the third video of this little mini series for spring stuff in 3D. So first we we covered movement. Last video we covered basically rotation, and now we're going to cover um, bones. And a popular name for it is called jiggle bone. So it's 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 a it's it's it's, it's a tool that's used in a lot of programming um, tools like Blender and and Maya and game engines have it but it's it's the ability to um basically um add more like realistic movements to bones it's, it's like a procedural animation of some kind of some type and, and the the, pre the premise is very simple um you know the idea we're going to cover some uh, the basic idea how to implement it but it, you can use it for a lot of things you can use it to control hair um so like if, if i'm moving back and forth you know the hair can can sway with you know with me uh, if you have a tail on an animal or uh, on a character it, it can you know as the character moves the tail just dynamically moves naturally you know how you would normally move it um so you got hair you got that you got your clothing you can have uh skirts and and, and other things um like this example boob physics <laughs> uh, is can also be done with the exact same idea uh here's a nice example over here of like gelatin so you can you can you have a jiggle, like gelatin. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a low place. And this one I've, I've seen this one before. This one's like a, just a tail that just moves based on uh, the movement of the main character. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, it's it's a it's a lot a lot of it is known as jiggle bone, but also also goes under the name of dynamic bone. So you'll find it called that too, maybe because some people don't like to call it jiggle. Uh, in this video, a lot of the code, I call it Jiggly. <laughs> so just because, why not? Go for it. Let's call it Jiggly. Um, yeah, like as you can see in this one, it, it, it's most likely used in the hair. Over here, it's probably used on the clothing. Um, so like, like, so, you, but this one's probably like, it's actually like a chain of, of bones that you apply. And that's what the next video is going to be about doing chain of bones. But today we're going to deal with a single bone. And, uh, yeah, so, so uh, the premise of it is not that complicated. Uh, you know, it just feels complicated, but it's not. So let's start looking at some coding, some examples. So we're going to, I'm going to, it's going to, I'm going to take about three examples to build, a, build it up, to, just to build up the concept behind it. So the concept behind what we want to do of a bone is that the bone is defined as two parts. You have... Um, let me just go back. Go back again. So this is like this is a great image. A bone is defined by two part parts basically. You have the like here's called the base, but sometimes it's actually called the head of the bone. I think in in Blender it's called the head, and then the tip is actually called the tail. So you have base, tip, or head and tail. Uh, so the idea, the basic, the base idea is that we keep track of the 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 bone will move based on the base, the head of the, t the thing, and what needs to 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 move and jiggle and and add rotation to is the 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 tip, the tail of the bone. That's the the thing that's going to rotate. So the base is where the rotation is happening, but it's based on the position of the of the head, the, the, the position of the tail, the tip, whatever. Now I'm, I'm getting confused. So it's, it's this part that actually starts doing a lot of the movement, and this part is what handles the rotation. So that's what we're, we're going to have to deal with. So here's, for example, so ideally here's my, uh, let, let's, like, like I said, you have two points in, in 3D space, right? Uh, hopefully you can see just fine. Uh, you have a blue dot and a green and a red dot. So, yeah, too bad I can make the dots bigger. Um, so the red is basically the head of our bone, and the blue is the tail of our bone. And the notion is, is as the the head moves, the tail tries to follow along. Whoa, did I have a springs already? Oh yeah, here you go. Not hard you can okay, you can tell, but the blue is trying to keep up. Yeah, springs. 
So it moves, it springs, and then springs. And and that's it, it, this is really the basically the idea of how it all works. You have a a point that moves, and you have another point that tries to try that tries to keep up. Now the the way it really works is that you every time the the bone moves, it has its 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 base rotation and its base its resting position, its bind pose. So what you're gonna what the idea is that you're always gonna have the point of the tail trying to catch up to the its resting position on the skeleton on your armature. So and yeah, <laughs> so that's that's what's going on here. Like right now we don't we don't you don't see it. No, I'll show you the next example. But this is really the gist of it. You know, you just have one point and you have another point chase after it to try to return back to its regular position. And its regular position is to be like 0.5 right above the red dot. So this is really the gist of how a jiggly bone works. You just have one point trying to catch up to the other point. Uh, it, it's the same thing. It's like basic. It's it's the same idea of uh, how we've been doing springs. You have the your target position, and you have your current position, and you have your velocity. So, um, so you consider the red dot to be the target position, but the target position keeps moving. <laughs> so that's the thing. It the target position is moving. So, the the blue dot is trying to keep up with it. It's, it's always trying to move toward that position. So when the red dot stops moving, it still has velocity, so it just springs a little bit, and then then it finally settles to its um, resting position, which is right above the red dot, and that's it. Uh, so like we can look at some code. Uh, the code is very simple. We have two dots. I have a little mover. Maybe I'll switch over to this. I have an, I have a new. Uh, uh, object called um, motion and it's just a bunch of object uh different types of moving so i so i saw in the future i'll have a lot of quick ways to test movement and test things out just by applying a mover to an entity so this is a pretty cool piece of code i'll we'll show you to you a little bit later um so yeah we, we have a mover point so you have a, i have some code that actually moves the the red dot around and then g spring is g spring is what moves the blue dot to try to keep up with the red dot, and th th this is all to it. It's like very simple. So we, like I said, just like a regular springs, we keep track of our velocity. Position is the position that we want it to be. The the the, the blue dot that's following, and then we're using the um, implicit the semi implicit Euler spring equation. So that means we have an oscillation, we have the dampening, dampening time, which then we finally calculate the damping ratio. And we just apply the spring, we get the position, and we apply that new position to the blue dot. And, and that's it. That's 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 it. Basic, simple, super, super, simple. So let's go to the next example. So this way things start to start to visualize a little bit better. All right. So now we have, let's say, this cube, uh, this this cube is going to be moving, and that black dot, this this represents our bone. So that's there's the t the end tail of the bone, and our bone has a big fat head. <laughs> okay, so this is the base of the bone. That's the tail of the bone. Um, that black black dot is its resting position. That's where that's the target position that we always want it to be. So if I now you kind of see there's the red dot. The red dot. It's now, now we have, now we have a red dot on top. The red dot represents that 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 position that we keep updating with the spring equation. And as you can see, we have a, a black dot and a red dot. And do I have this here? Yeah, here you go. And I don't know if you notice, but you see there's this orange line that appears. And I have a function that I can freeze frame. So so this allows us to really illustrate what, what we're doing now. So now, now this is really what the now. This is, now we're going to talk about how we actually apply the this rotation. Now, now we know that we have a target position that's constantly moving, and this is the 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 position of our bone, and this is the position that we're trying to keep up to the, to the target position for our tail of a bone. So, and this is and this giant cube is the head of our bone. So we have we have some bit of information. We have the position of our of our, the head of our bone. 
the target position of our tail that we want to get, and then we have the follow position of our tail. So the tail has two positions, target and follow. So based on this three bits information, we can actually devise two rays from it. So we have the ray, the black dot for our target ray, and we have our follow ray. Now we have two rays. What can we do with two rays? With two rays, what we can do is A, do a cross product of it, which would give us an orthogonal ray. <laughs> it would give us another ray, but that's orthogonal to both points. That orthogonal ray gives us the ability to create a rotation axis. So this line would create a perfect rotational axis to get red, or actually to get red toward black or black toward red. It gives us that perfect rotation. Now, the next thing is with two rays, we can also figure out the angle. With two rays is an equation that there's actually several, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> I have some problems, and I was using my angle, and I thought it was wrong, and I found another one that's supposed to be better for, like, values close to zero, and it's still having problems, and then I realized I was just doing the math wrong. <laughs> and then, then, oh, okay. <laughs> so I, I, was, I had the positions all wrong. It was, it was kind of really screwy. I had the, you got to be careful when you deal with world space. And I kind of realized when I'm build, when I was writing this that the armature system isn't perfect. Now, I'll, I'll explain it to you in the end why. Because um, we'll look at some code, and there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a thing I have to do, and it's because of the way I built the armature system. And I'm going to re rectify it, uh, hopefully, by the next video. But for now, there's a slight glitch, and um, but I managed to kind of fix it. So long story short, we get, we get two things. We get an axis of rotation and with angle. So once we have an axis of rotation and angle, we can tell Quintorian there's a function in Quintorians that you can find in a lot of libraries called axis rotation. So axis and rotation. So now we can actually say, here's our, remember like uh, in the previous video when I say w um, when we want to do rotations for the baller, we take the bind pose and we apply the rotation to it. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to take this bind pose, this resting pose, and we're going to multiply it by this, um, by this axis of rotation and by the angle. So this way we can then we can then define we can actually rotate the bone so that its tail points at the red dot instead of pointing straight up. Uh, let's see, I froze it. And if I stop, you can see it just springs back and forth. And you'll see that the, the orange dot back goes back and forth. That's okay. I Actually, when I was doing this, I thought this is, this is a problem. And it's actually not a problem. Um, because no matter what you do, no matter where the the, the, the black and red line is, you're always going to get the exact, the exact same degrees. It's always going to be like 10 degrees. But that orange dot that defines the axis basically could be negative and positive. So even though it's 30 degrees, you can say 30 degrees rotating in the forward axis or 30 degrees rotating in the back axis. Well, then it will still get you to where you want to go. So I thought it was, that was a, that was a problem, but I really, I, don't do math after midnight. It just drives you crazy, <laughs> especially rotations and quatorians. And then the next morning I realized I'm an idiot. Well, the, 30 degrees, I, I don't know which direction. It's the axis that defines the direction of rotation. So there you go. <laughs> uh, and if we go to Jiggly 2, if you want to look at the code, uh, things get a little bit more complicated. Uh, actually, that's right. This way doesn't really, it really does anything. This is really just test code. Um, but like I said, you, you, C pose is the is the bone. You know, you we figure out one ray, we get figure out the other ray, and we do a cross product, and that's it. But um, like I said, this doesn't really do anything. Um, but like I said, you you can see how the rotation moves. So let's say I switch over to um to just something that just walks around in a circle, and I stop it. It's it just brings it back to where it needs to go, and it always follows it. And this is exactly how you want the jiggle bone to work. You want it basically following it. And then when you stop, it, it kind of just springs around. It, it kind of springs around in a circle because it has that it has that velocity, which is great. Um, because I, like I built, I built a bunch of uh, 
movement um, code to really test it out. And this one, I think it's called uh, random radius. And this one, it kind of just zigzags randomly to really just to test out to make sure everything um, is copacetic. So I did a very thorough de uh, testing to make sure Jiggly Bone works. So there you go. It's and it, and it, and it like like I said, it's very stable. It works very nicely. It does the job done. Uh, let's see one more. Let's do another test. This is access. So instead of just movement, we can we can we also have the text rotation. So it's just not um, just movement. We have to deal with rotation as well. So rotation becomes another important factor. So you have to, so you have to make sure that when you define the target. Uh, position that you have to take rotation into consideration not just position position rotation is needed to calculate your world space bind pose um, that you're currently currently at um, yeah if I stop the rotation it just kind of just goes back to its position uh, let's see let's try the quickly the other ones um, this is noise position uh, put up refresh and this one just uses noise for movement so instead of like zigzagging it kind of just moves smoothly it stops it slows whatever pearl noise tells it to do um, so this way it gives me a lot it gives me the ability you can kind of see it just it just really lags not lags but it like it like it, the follow point sometimes it goes so fast like it zips so fast but again it all you're going to do is rotate and it's just going to point toward the um, point or toward the the red dot uh, let's try noise rotation and this one just stays in place and it's just random noise just just noise rotations now, and I've done videos of how to apply noise to rotations so a lot of this stuff we've, we've already kind of covered in the past so yeah and like I said it's this is that this is the basic idea and it works. It just works just fine. Now the only difference is we need to start applying it to an actual bone. So that's jiggly number three. So there's an actual bone, and there's like actually like two ways you can go about it. Um, but I'll, I'll cover them both. So here's our bone, and if I press play, we we have our target position and we have our following dot. And like I said, remember when we had those those two rays? All we have to do is Again, like I said, just have to calculate the axis of rotation and the um, okay, axis of rotation and the angle. And then you just apply it to your, your bind pose. And that's really the gist of it. And here you go. You have, if I stop, and the bone just springs. And let's see, I have others. I can, this one, this example, I built, built more functionality into it, so more control over uh, the. So I can actually kind of cycle between all the different types of. Um, movement functionality that I built, put together. So this is kind of like the, the random radius. This one is just the rotation. And this one is, um, this is like Perlin noise movement. Again, like I said, I'm constantly changing the thing and everything just acts in it. Everything's like, like I said, nice and stable, even though everything's not perfect anymore because now, now it's stuck at a certain ring. Nurse and rotation. So if I switch it to Perlin noise, everything still works. I can do this, switch back to here. Circle. And go back and forth. And like, and then, like I said, I like how I kind of just, you know, even though it's rotated, it, it works. So if I if I'm moving forward, this is gonna spring back. So you have you have like like think about if this is hair, if this is hair and you, you're going, like you're going toward blue, you're gonna have wind resistance, and wind resistance is gonna make the red dot go in the opposite direction. And that's what the the spring physics does. So when I stop it, it can just spring back into position. All right, and uh, let's look at the final code of how all this works and. This is it. This is really all of it, and there's really not much to it. Oh, actually, no. This is the wrong file. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. That looks a little small. Uh, yeah, here's the controller. I just uh, am able to con control moving from different movers. Uh, okay. So it's not that long. 
um, because I have like two, three different examples. So this is our. So one thing I need to do is I need to keep a reference of the bone that I'm trying to modify, and I want to know what's the offset for the tail. So because I really don't save the tail information, I just save the length of the bone. So I the, I know the length of the bone is always is always going to be zero x zero um, z, but the Y is actually the length of the bone. So that's the tail. Uh, velocity, position, or oscillation, dampening, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think the final code, I don't need WC, but this just transforms to, to kind of calculate the world position of the, the tail of the bone. And here I have to start at starting position. So this way, when I start the animation, if the position is is uh, matches where the bone currently is so there's not this kind of like instant bounce because you know let's say um i have it set at zero but the bone currently lives lives at 10 and then when i start it tries to quickly bounce toward 10 you know and it gets that weird jiggle at the very beginning but then it kind of stabilizes really quickly because you know it's just going to quickly go back into its spring physics so so we, one thing you have to kind of keep to make the animation look smooth and correct you just have to predefine pre the, the position to match where the current target is uh, so the, like i said the first step is i need to find out the world my target i need to know where my my target position is for the follow point so i need so here i i make um arm local which is the the base of the bone I make a copy because that's the world position of the parent. And here is the child, which is the bone. So we have um, the cube is the parent and the bone is its own entity. So you have two entities, you have a parent and child relationship. And uh, so that's the, so the world position is the, the, the cube, which is the parent. And then I get the child, which is the bone. And then I just add the bind pose from... Oh yeah, I just I define because that's that's the bind pose for that specific bone. So this way I can um, know the tail. So once I know the rotation of the black dot, so that's what the idea is that WC gives me basically the rotation and position of that black dot, the head of the bone. Once I do that, I can just take the tailbone value from up here and just transform it into a VEC3. So now I finally had the target position of our tail. So once you once you know the the rotation and position of the bone of the head, the head the, the head of the bone, you can then use that information to calculate the world position of your tail. Once I have the target, you apply it to the spring. You have a position, blah blah. It's the same thing in the last three videos. <laughs> and here we go. So now we're just so now we know where our world position is. The um the black dot. So. The black, that's the black that world's the WC position, the world child position, transform. So I make a ray from T par target and the following target, the following point and the final target. So we have ray and B. Uh, I have the wrong one commented out. So here we go. Basic idea. I just want to make sure everything works. It should work. Everything still works. Good. Beautiful. Um, so we have our two rays. So, and they have to be normalized. We need normalization, uh, especially when we start using this function. But for now, we ha well, we also need to normalize. Uh, well, well oh, never mind. So, to do this, we don't to do the cross product. We don't need these two to be normalized. It's okay. But I have it normalized because I need it for other things. But for this basic idea, you don't need it to normalize. So you can just get the rays and then just do a cross product. And then the cross product, you normalize because that's become the rotation axis. So we have the rotation axis. And then you then you just calculate the angle of the ray. And maybe I should really show you guys. If I go to fungi, math, uh, vec3. Uh, what's the name of this function? It's just called angle. There it is. Uh, this was the original function I used. And this is the new function I use. Um, this one works just fine. And this one works uh, for values that are closer to zero. Um, ideally, I don't probably don't need this one because then, then I'm stuck using... 
810 but then this one uses square root so i don't know i don't know which one's more more uh, less efficient square root or a tangent to um well you know what i have to calculate length so length also creates square root so ideally like i said you really don't need to use this because there's more better ways to do it uh, but just that's the idea you get you get the the, the axis angle you get the, the angle itself and then you just tell quartorians here's the information make a rotation for me so once you have that rotation um, yeah, that's it. I just apply that rotation because in, in, in this example, I don't need to, to do too much. So I just apply it and you're, and you're set and done. And that's the basic idea. Like I said, that is the basic idea. Um, but like I said, there's more efficient ways of doing it. So instead of doing cross product and angle and everything else, quatorians have a, you can, there's a function you can call rotate two. and rotate two it takes the starting uh, point and, um, what is the second point you want to be? And it, it, it actually, the code-wise, it does create, um, it does does a crowd product to actually create it. But the, the way it calculates the angle is more efficient. Um, so if I go to Quintorians, find rotation two. And in, in this case, to, for the way it calculates uh, the rotation or the angle of rotation, it does so by using a pro doc product. But for this to work correctly, um, A and B has to be normalized. So it needs to be normalized at this point. Those two rays need to be normalized. Uh, so this takes a dot product. So it knows to say if you're really close when the, when the two points are almost touching, um, how to calculate how to calculate its angle in a different way. Uh, if it's well, this is the negative. We're, sorry, this this dot product is when it's almost perfectly 180 degrees difference. So this basically just calculates the right way to get something that's very close to 180 degrees. Uh, when it's greater than the point one, this is when the two points are in parallel. They're 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 like touching each other. It's like they're they're, they're equal. So if they're equal, then we're not applying any rotation whatsoever. Uh, otherwise, again, we like I said, we do a cross up product. And if the and if these two points are normalized the cross product will automatically be normalized uh, which you kind of don't need to worry about because you have to normalize the quintorian anyway <laughs> so it'll get normalized regardless one way or another so you kind of put in um your but i think it's but it, uh you know i think it says here you have to make it i don't know not this one i don't know i i, I, I think you probably should I haven't tested. It. I, I can't remember if I did or not. But make pass them in rotate uh, at normalized uh, just for try it out. If you see if you, everything works just fine. But uh, I, I guess you know what. Screw it. Let's see. Let's see if it breaks. It might. It might act funky. Why not? Instead of you doing it, I'll do it for you. Uh, I guess you don't. Oh yeah, you. Yeah, you kind of do need to normalize it. See the dots, the, 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 the bone is not pointing at the red dot. And that's simply because I'm not normalizing it, because things are a little funky. So if I go back to normalization, and if I do a freeze frame, that's what we want. We want the, the tail of the bone, the bone to point. We actually want the whole bone to point at that red dot. Uh, so yes, normalizing very important. You do need to normalize it, because uh, that returns back to my point where I, if you have a normal two normalized values and you cross product, it's kind of automatically normalized to begin with. So when you so when you're putting an axis of rotation into here, into this part, it's already normalized. And then uh, for some, I don't know how it works, but if you take the dot product plus one, and then you normalize the whole thing, it gives you a perfect rotation. So instead of doing um, calculating the angle between the two points, just a dot product does the job and just normalize it. So, and inside when you normalize, you still have to do a square root. So, <laughs> whatever. Um, but yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that's in uh, in this in this one. We take the world the world child's rotation which is that's the target so that's our target bind pose that's our target rotation and we'll um 
So yeah, we, we calculate our rotation and then we multiply it by our bind pose. It gets backwards. When you do contortions, most of the math is backwards. It's not forward. And so so it's the rotation that we want to rotate by multiplied by the rotation of or our current rotation. And that kind of adds it. It adds it correctly. And then we again p it, it it's backwards so we say we say we we multiply the inverted times that the value that we currently have and that converts it into local space because we want to set this back into the bone we need it to be in local space so this everything kind of the hierarchy can then be recalculated at, uh, before we render to make sure everything is perfectly uh, legit together in in world space so this is like the more efficient way of doing it right uh now, the one thing to keep in mind is what's going on. So I have a little bug here, but it still illustrates the point. <clears throat> no matter which type of movement I'm doing, as you can see, this red cube, uh, this, this little cube always stays forward. It always looks forward because we're always taking the bind pose and we're always changing the, start, uh, the, the bind pose. And that's the starting point. And for, for, for most things, this is exactly what you want. You want to do a rotate too. Now, there might be small instances that you need the spring to work as a spring, but to also look in the direction that you're moving. Uh, so that's a different um, type of a thing. Like I said, no matter what I do, and this what this cube does, it tells me the direction that everything looks so red is pointing forward so red is the forward of the cube it's the forward of that cube and it never moves it never changes it uh it's just, it, it it mirrors the green line of the bone because the bone has shows its axis so that green line and that red cube match up perfectly uh, ideally i wanted this dot this cube to be at the at the head of it but because of um how the armatures work it, it I can't attach anything to the bone and have everything parented perfectly. <laughs> I realized I made a boo-boo when I built the armature sim. It's actually a quick, easy fix. Um, the idea is that right now the armature is linked to the mesh, but is not part of the mesh's hierarchy. Um, I went to go look at uh, Unity and um, Unreal Engine, and they actually take the, the skeleton and they parent it to the mesh. So this way, anywhere the mesh moves, the bones get replaced, get moves along with it too. Um, the way I was doing it in, in this currently is that the mesh is linked to the skeleton, but they're not in the same hierarchy. So in the shader, the shader calculates the position of um, for the bones, and then it uh, then it adds onto it the model view, the model uh, the model matrix. Which is the position of the actual mesh, uh, or the the mesh, or the yeah the mesh position, the entity. So it's like a, it's like a two step process. Um, but apparently, I did not realize that this causes an issue where I can't parent things to the bone. So if I want to have like a an arm and I want to have a, a a sword attached to the to the hand of an arm, it won't move with it, and it's it's the the the, the higher is disconnected. So that's why the bone is the way it is. Um, so if you've been using, the, if you've been playing with my armature system, there's this little glaring bug I never realized because I never tried parenting things directly to bones. But like I said, it's a, it's, it's a quick fix. Fix the shader so I don't um, use the model view, um, uh, the model matrix. It just use the bones, and all I have to do is when I create the bones, always parent it to the mesh. So all the root bones are parented to the mesh, and everything becomes one big hierarchy, and everything kind of should work just fine. Hopefully by the next video, it should uh, work just uh, next fine. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this is because, let's like I say, what if I want to m always face the direction of the velocity? So I want to spring, but at the same time, I kind of rotate toward the velocity. Uh, so what we can do is then... Start uh, like we have done this in, uh, for the aim I I K for the aim I K video like a couple of videos when we we're doing inverse kinematics, we start building uh, our quartorians based on axis of rotations because um, axis of rotations 
as long as the three axes are orthogonal, we, it becomes a transformation matrix. Uh, not, uh, sorry, not transform. It becomes a rotation matrix. And a rotation matrix can be easily converted into a contorian. So we can define a contorian by a, an orthogonal uh, axis. Um, uh, angles, not angles. Uh, three rays that are all orthogonal with each other. So everything's 90 degrees of each other. So, you know, you, you have a, a, a forward direction, up direction, and a left direction, and you can you can define a, quator, uh, um, a quatorian very easily that way, too. Um, like, from axis is a function I put together myself. Um, uh, so, it's, it's it, like I said, it all it does is it takes... It, it, it's basically just um, matrix 3 to quantorian conversion that's all it is that's if you look that up if you look in the library you'll you'll find that code it's it uh, if you yeah like i said it's, it's a, a rotation matrix to quantorian conversion it's the exact same code you'll probably find anywhere like i said those three axes are all orthogonal and they're all that's what it is so once we figure out those three axes and like I said, one of the axes, uh, the forward, uh, so we take velocity as our starting forward and we use ray B, which ray B is toward our target, the red dot. And that becomes our new up direction. So that's, or actually, sorry, the, the, the direction toward the red dot is our up direction. And we take velocity as our temporary forward direction, and this gives us our left direction. So once we have our left direction, we take the left, and then we take the, our up direction, and it gives us our proper forward direction because it has to be orthogonal. If we don't make things orthogonal, like everything 90 degrees of each other, things break. That's another another tip when you do axes with trans, uh, with, with contorient. They, they need to be orthogonal. We feed that in. And we just multiply by our inverse to convert everything to local space and call it a day. Now, if I go into here, and now you see the red dot, uh, the red cube changes. So that means, like, now the only thing that's that we need to take a steps is is that just switching the rotation doesn't work when we're doing a back and forth motion. Like if we're working, if we're moving in, in a more circular or in a curvature way, this is going to be no issue. So if I switch this to um, to a, a more circular motion, everything works beautifully. So wherever the bone is springing to, it the face is always aimed at um, the direction of the velocity. So, you know, like I said, you're always looking toward the direction that you're moving. Um, how long is this video already? Eh, let me go try to wrap this up real quick. Um, <clears throat> uh, like I said, the only issue is that when you do kind of back and forth, there's no like this this motion of actually rotating into that direction. Uh, so you might take and have to take an extra step when you're when you're dealing with this. You have to take an extra step where you just don't apply the the rotation. You now you have to keep track of rotation itself. And then maybe do a quick tween or like some kind of quick tweening uh, toward a target rotation, uh, like current, rota current rotation toward target rotation. So this way you kind of get everything to kind of be more smoothly, especially if you do it back and forth. Um, but yeah, like I said, this works. It works great if you want to keep things looking in direction. So, that's great. Um, yeah, and and the, like I said, this requires more steps to 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 utilize because you now because like I said, it depends on the movement. But ideally, you're gonna want to because just in case you're going forward and you want to go back, you know, the rotation is instant. So we want to make it more circular. So like I said, you have to keep track of quintorians. And again, we're dealing with cubes all the time now. How, how do we use this? So we're, we're back to the baller. Now we're going to add that the jiggy bone to the chair of the baller, right? And um, so if I go back, it springs, and there you go. If I go forward, if I go back, it uh, if I go left and right, it twists. So the chair actually has a bone, and the bone is pointing downwards. So this way... Um, I can actually make it more realistic of how the chair moves. So I, got, I still need to tweak, tweak it a little bit. 
but like it, like I love I do enjoy the how it moves, uh, folks. Because I, I, I like the idea that if I'm going forward, the chair spins up a little bit, uh, but it spins up a little bit too much. So I need to fix the dampening just just a tad, so this way it does um, to make the spring a little bit tighter. So so um, it doesn't so the following point stays closer to the th uh, stays closer. But it gets you there, so I can I can do like angles and and the chair just rotates. Um, what I need to do is really start fixing the the other version of uh, the other version uh, where you can ha you do the the axis. So this way, when I, when I I turn, it actually maybe spins toward the direction that you're moving. So that might be more fun. So you kind of have this, all this spring stuff, but at the same time, the chair rotates toward the direction that you're doing. So that I haven't really really been playing with it too much because that requires more work. But I kind of just wanted something quick and easy to kind of show you guys um, and really to really experiment with um, do, adding a little bit of spring physics toward the in the chair. So this way we can kind of have the ball kind of just go crazy. Yeah, so... That's fun. That's great. I don't know. I have. A, I have a. I have a. I just think it's really fun to play with this. So, uh, and um, the way I got it to, to work is, I do have a fourth version. And the fourth version is I created a ECS component. So if I go into Armature, I have a file called Jiggly, and I have a Jiggly component. And then Jiggly component, here's my information. You know, my oscillation, my damping ratio, my follow position, my follow velocity, and my tailbone. And I just some quick functions. And this one kind of helps me set the posi uh, the follow position to it, to the bone's current resting position in world space. Again, th there's like a little uh, not here. Uh, so what else? And we have a jiggly system, which then kind of just applies the, the work. Um so I kind of have to do this little weird thing where I get the world position of the EA, the 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 mesh, and then I have to take the bones world position and kind of kind of append to it. Um, once I fix up the system, this will be a single call to EB, and I'll get the world position instantly. Like I said, this I, this is a little issue because of how armature system works. It's uh, the armatures are not parented to the mesh they're linked to the mesh two separate things they're not the same hierarchy and then um, once I get the world position of the the parent of the bone I quickly save the, uh, the inverse rotation of it and then I start adding the the bones bind pose so this way I get the the head of the bone and then once I have the, the the transform of the head the world space transform of the head of the bone I can then uh, apply, uh, rotate the tailbone to get every, so so I get the tail position in in world space. The tail position is my target position. I add it to um, my springs, and then again, I figure out the the two rays, the ray toward the target, the ray toward the falling position. Um, this is rotate two, but I re I renamed the function and I made it um, instead of being a static function, I made it into a function that lives on the instance of, a, of the object um, and I give it a new name I say from unit vex so this way I know <laughs> it's a nice note to myself that unit vex means they have to be normalized so that means that so it's root like I said rotate two I wasn't sure if I need to be normalized I made sure <laughs> I, I, I alert myself this has to be normalized so I guess I did test it and didn't work and yeah <laughs> and uh, yeah and then I multiply it by the world position rotation, which would be the 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 the, the bones head, and then the inverse of the parent. So this way I convert to local space, and we're set and done. And and that's it. And like I said, Jiggly is my component, and this is my system, and I just apply it. So this way I can I can apply Jiggly bone to a bunch of bones, and this system will then do all the mathematics for me on the array. And it, that's ECS framework for you. I love it. It makes uh, it makes building a lot of these things. When you have a lot of data, it makes it really super easy. And uh, let's see, 45 minutes. And uh, there you go. We have dynamic bone. We have jiggly bones. 
we have spring bones whatever you want to call it we have them and now we can control it so i kind of wanted to have some meshes of girls with like hair and skirts and boobs and just apply all three of them and just move the character around i just i don't have time to to sit there and play with meshes because i'm not very good at it and um a lot of them needs a lot of like a weight painting fixes and i just i just there's like no good free model that has everything perfectly done that's free that has all the aspects i'm looking for like i said some, some bits of hair a decent sized rack that, that you can rotate that, that has bones attached to them and everything else and everything's just nicely uh and skirts because i do have one mesh that has a skirt that's really well um done um for uh single bone it has like four bones but they're not chained so they're but the skirt works really well when you move the bones around and that would work really well with the uh, jiggly bones i wanted to test that out so maybe in the future i'll just quick quick video of a mesh and just post it over the file somewhere uh but unless you have a someone who has a really cool mesh that's free they want to donate um like a girl like i said some nice hair um Maybe some bangs and maybe a ponytail or something, so I can just apply it, let it jiggle a little bit. Um, you know, maybe like a skirt. This that's maybe a single bone skirt. It's not not chains. I like something simple, to, like like the one model I I found. Um, but the model is kind of like high. Is high poly and I don't know. I feel I have to, and it's in pieces. I kind of wanted to kind of merge it all together in one one. So there's one mesh and one skeleton instead of having a bunch of meshes because the skirt is separate from the body and there's a skirt sure and it's so many pieces it's a lot of pieces i wanted to simplify it and that's why i'm not using it but um yeah if you if anyone has a cool model that that they can they can donate and share that'd be great um but yeah uh so this is the end we have like i said we have now jiggly bones we can we can add a lot of um, more dynamic movement. Uh, so once we start going back to dealing with IK and everything else, we then have the jiggly bone that allows, allowed us to have our characters or certain aspects of our characters animate dynamically without us having to actually animate them. They'll just m animate based on movements. Like, just like the chair. The chair is not being, is not pre-animated. It's just the jiggly bone is procedurally uh, dynamically animating it based on the movement of the character just like hair would do and just like like clothing and things like that and tails don't forget tails uh, i wanted to do like a frieza character because if frieza has a tail and that'd be fun to just have the tail kind of wag around uh, maybe in the future i'll have i'll do a, like a, a, a find that like a good frieza model once i have characters like moving around i'll have them walk, walk around and the tail kind of just wags excuse me, based on movement. Um, so yeah, that's the end. Uh, next video, we're going to deal with chain of bones. So uh, it's it follows the like the last same thing. Uh, I don't remember because I did the, the code months ago. So I need to review myself with all my prototypes and then uh, rewrite it with my current level of knowledge uh, and my very rust um in influence writing of code now because a lot of my code now is very rusty because <laughs> i've been doing a lot of learning of rust and i like the rust language um but uh we'll we'll, we'll do that in the future maybe um but yeah i just need to rewrite things uh again the everything will be on github except for the baller if you want the baller uh go to patreon it's free i'm not making you charge i'm not charging you to download this um this mesh has been ripped from the game, so again, I don't want to profit from pirate. I don't want to say it's piracy, but I don't want to profit from something I didn't pay for or I didn't make. So this is free. I don't. I'm not. I'm not going to charge you for it. Um, again, this is this is for learning purposes. This uh, this makes it like, especially. I think I mentioned in the first video that this kind of thing makes people more excited to uh, learn, uh, like. Like who 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 wants to learn spring physics when you're just dealing with cubes and lines, but you start doing this to to this, you know, like all the all this spring stuff has been added to here. You know, you got spring rotation, spring movement, uh, jiggly a jiggle bone rotate, um, spring movement. You now we we got it all <laughs> working on this one mesh. So we made we we brought this mesh to life. Now it's it's, um, you know, it's, it needs a little bit more fine tuning, a little bit more work, but 
as a prototype, it, it's it's great. It's fun. I can't wait till we get to the VR aspect of the series where we kind of step into the ball and then we're we're controlling it and we're we're, we're you know, that's where the fine tuning needs to be done because I don't want to get sick while I'm driving the ball or in VR. Um, so yeah. So that's it. I'm tired. It's probably midnight. Need to take a shower. I'm gonna grab a bowl of cereal because I'm starting to feel hungry. Uh, <laughs> midnight snacking. I'm getting a little chubby. I'm getting a little chubby. I shouldn't eat the cereal, but whatever. <laughs> Live once, right? Um, uh, I do do exercise a lot. I do karate, and I have a tr new treadmill now that I, every other night I'm running on it. Yay! <laughs> Got to be healthy. Uh, okay, so I'm tired. I'm now I'm rambling because I'm tired and it's late. Hope you had fun. I hope you're enjoying it. This is great. I'm having fun. Um, I love this. I can't wait till we start doing more and more character animations so we can apply a lot of these things. And now that it's an ECS uh, component, it, like it's very very super easy to apply it. Um, it was uh, super super easy uh, to apply it to the baller. Um, Like I had the chair, and I just just apply just apply that component to that bone, and that's it. That's everything that I had to do to make it work um, for the baller. It was actually the the most simplest thing I've had to implement for the baller so far. Um, so yeah, again, if you want the baller, go to Patreon. It's free. Uh, but if you want to tip me a buck for all my hard work. Please do so if you are so willing. If you want to give me more than a dollar, that's that'd be nice too. But again, a dollar tip is good. I'm like a bum on the street with the hat, with the can. Just give me your dollar. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. I don't want to make this too long. Bye bye.